Okay. So the punter punts the horse. He's entitled to the fairest result that he can possibly get. If yes. it's not fair, he's entitled to a fair result. So you got as a as an operator, and you're a director of Gold Circle. I think you've got to make a decision. Okay. Disqualify the horse from the bets. Okay. Because it's not fair on the punters. Because let's say the tote favourite doesn't win the race. Okay. okay. And all the punters do their money. So it's better to disqualify the, the horse from the race from the punting point of view. Then pay the owner the stake check. Okay, there's a problem there. Okay. I'll just elaborate on it. The guy who's run third says, <laughs> he's out. I want my one and a half million for in second. No, he what didn't run second. What about my... He didn't run... Listen, okay. that, he did not run second. Trust. He's not entitled to it. It's the same as, a, same as Principal Boy winning the July here, okay? And James, so hang on, the guy's got a quartet. The trifectas, and they've banked the horse for second. Look, there's always going to there's, there's listen, always going to be always going to be a problem. Correct. But that's my point. If it's a if it's a favourite, okay, and it's a horse that's highly fancied or strongly fancied, there's got to be an escape clause. And this is what I said to yeah. a couple of the guards. So maybe discretion should lie with the chief staff at the death. Correct. And the point is, is that you do not want to inconvenience one section of the racing public hugely over another section, Correct. whether it be the owner. Or the punter, because basically those are the two people you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. there's so always no, there's you, always a down. You got yeah, and the point is, is that to pay a twelve thousand rand check or fifteen thousand rand check for horse that runs second or third out of your stakes check because you've disqualified the horse, but the owner's got to keep you've got to keep the owner. Oh, you've got to keep both. You know? I think just with this issue, there were issues, and, and a lot of people were up in arms about it. I remember. That. We had uh, messages from Robert Bloomberg, you know, who's a form studier, Tony Ribland. These guys, the staffs had the rules out. I sat in the board meeting. It's not an easy decision to make. But the, th the interesting thing that came out of it, and again, I'm not taking stances or signs here, was that Derek Martin came to me with the rules. And he said, there it is. That they, by those rules, the non-runner rule, those staffs were right. Obviously, it, it, of course it, they were right. Well, but we know they were and now right. They the the no non-runner rule. Option. This is interesting, James. The non-runner rule is sixty-one point five point one one. Which, if you're in the first four, you've got to be a clear runner. Mm -hmm. Further down the page is a non-starter rule. Yeah, sixty-one point six point one. That. that if that had been applied and taken the favourite out, yeah. everything's happy. Why well, was the thing is, is everyone happy? Uh, okay, now, now well, the, the owner. Now, well, how's the owner going to feel? Well, he's fine. He's absolutely fine. His horse has been convenienced badly. And also, James... But he didn't get his third stake check. He, do you think he'd rather remain unbeaten or get third stake Listen, than a non At the end of top? the day, you don't know. That's but the if problem. If there's a rule okay. that can stop a riot and yeah. stop the race meeting, that is perfectly in power. Just being the devil's advocate here, I'm not throwing it down in one's face. But Derek Martin... That's, brought, why, that's why I said to you... The non-starter rule should have been applied, he said. That's why I said to you, okay, there's two sets of people here, okay? There's the punting public and there's the owner. Okay, mm. one of them is going to be inconvenienced. Ah, Make a no plan doubt. so yes. that you can uh, have damage control with the one who's going to be inconvenienced. So if mm. the punter is going to be inconvenienced, have damage control. Sure, okay? I agree if about damage If the is going to be inconvenienced, have damage control. Yeah. The way the situation worked out, one was inconvenienced and there was no damage control. Yeah, that was the point. A good, very good point. You know, when I was in there, one of the RA punters from outside came in, and he put a very good point forward, and he said that. If you guys make this decision and you're sticking to your rules and everything like that, the rules state clearly every horse has to be ridden out by every rider. Mm. He said, have a look at the first furlong. Mm. He said, the jockey, Sean Cormack's horse is up very fast. He's looking around. He's, uh, Arthur's up there with him looking around. And they, they sort of, after a furlong, realize, hey, listen, it's not going to be called a false start. It's going to, it's yeah, going to be a race. No Even doubt. though the first few words out of the commentator's mouth were, it looks like a false start or something, something along those lines. So... I know that the powers that be are looking to, don't think it's just been pushed away. The, the operators, the power that be, they're sitting down to try and find a scenario or a solution. And as you say, James, I think you've got to have a damage control scenario. Yeah, I think that that's the bottom line, and I'm sure that they'll get to the bottom of it. And it was a very unfortunate incident because I know the rule was changed yes. about two years ago. Correct. To specifically not inconvenience the owner whose horse ran second in the July because the gate doesn't open properly. Mm. Because the old rule was, if the gate doesn't open properly, that horse is a non-runner. Yeah. Okay? Imagine you prepared your horse for, it doesn't matter about the July, it might be a, a yeah. little group you know, three race. Just, uh, I think it was changed, and I stand to be corrected, by a Gary uh, Alexander horse 
Yeah, that's, that's good. right. Was that's exactly what V. Moodley said last week. Did he? It was yeah, inconvenienced. he was on the show last okay, week. Okay, yeah. so that was yeah. inconvenienced yeah. And it, it, yeah. at the start. It, it ran third. As it ran in the place accumulated was hot favorite. The favorite ran out of the place, and then they disqualified the horse. The horse was made a non-runner. So everyone went on to the hot favorite. And yeah. lost their money. Lost their money, So yeah. there are it's many tough. scenarios, yeah. you know, which, which, which come to play. And, and this was just one of those very unfortunate scenarios. Mm. And I think that what's happened is the, uh, the stalls at Clearwood are not 100%. No. They're not ideal because we'd had a, a situation early in the day yeah. where he called sure. a false start. And I, I think the, the starter's gun shy. I think that the uh, vet's gun shy. There's yeah. all types of you people know, out you there must that remember, are doing James, a job that there, is a very difficult There is job. a scenario where you're going to have RF punter saying, well, the horse was trotted out because it's reared. But there's also the scenario one day you want to, the, the vet and the jockey, whoever there, must make that decision. You've got Because it could be a black type race. Or it could be, there's a lot of... There's a lot of very, very difficult. It, it's very, very, very difficult. But I know that uh, uh, Graham Hawkins this year uh, has been right round, looking how they handle the problems at the start. And uh, this, uh, the Singapore system seems to be the one where you've got the lights like a Grand Prix down the track, where if for, for some reason it's a big field and the starter misses a, a couple of gates or something going wrong, the f chief staff watching it can push it and the lights go and everyone pulls up. It's a, it's a good idea. that we So they are looking at solutions. And they mustn't make them red and green. <laughs> You Imagine the colorblind jockey. He sees the red and green lights. <laughs> they both look the same. He's on his, <laughs> on his bicycle. So, you know, that's just a thought. Eh? Yeah, it's listen. Sharp, that's, eh? yeah, oh. There's sirens. There's everything. Sirens. Yeah. Well, that's for the deaf folks. What about them? You know, there was, uh, Lester Lots. Pickett. Do you hear this great story about Lester Pickett when he walked off the race course? No. And the um, battler came up to him and said to him, Lester, do me a favor. Uh, give me a fiver, please. Uh, you know, I'm battling or whatever. Uh, Lester turns around to him and says, hey, I'm deaf in this ear. Come and ask me in this ear. So the guy walks around to the other side of him and he says to him, Lester, do me a favor. Um, I need a tenor. I'm really battling. He says it was better this side. Better this side. Lester's been, been known, uh, you know, for his... Uh, they say he, he, had a, he had a speech impediment until he had the phone for a good ride. Yeah. That, was, that was always the case with him. And I remember when, was it Coombe or Bally Doyle? Moved him on. He left or whatever the agreement yeah, was. Right. Yeah. And Patrick Gitty. Richard O'Brien moved him on. Yeah, and yeah. Pat and, and, and uh, El Gran Senor was their derby horse. Yeah. And it got beaten by the, the son. The other O'Brien's horse won it yeah. uh, ahead or something. In the, in, and Pickett walked past them. They all huddled together. He said, Mithy me, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so he was known for his chirps. <laughs> that's really brilliant. But a great anyway, rider. That's, that's your call for the day. Yep. Um, I think we've done it. And um, remember... Next week, we'll have Tom Callahan, which should be fun. And uh, great, great race. week's racing. Great, great week. week's racing. We've got the big races on Saturday at Turf Dune. You can go right through the day, as Clyde told us. Um, if there's food left, if Clyde's not on course, you'll be able to race World Cup night on Saturday night as well. So that should be fun. From uh, Laugh and Me, have a great week's racing. <laughs>